guys, it's Nicole here back on this Monday night. I hope you guys are all doing great out there and welcome back to Nicole's View. Now this breaking news, well, it broke last night. I was well in the bed by then when this happened. So you guys by now have heard about this Stephen Paddock who went on a domestic white terrorist uh, rampage, killing all those folks um, out there in Las Vegas right across the street basically from Mandalay Bay. Um, it was a big country festival going on and when I first heard it I wasn't shocked but it's just crazy to me. I was like just this is just crazy but this is America at its best. This is America's um, best. The demonic terrorists that go around doing this. We have seen this so many times at this point it's become numb. Um, you know, killing kids in the school, that wasn't enough, okay? So we already know what's going to happen. It's going to be the same, same old crap. Folks are going to be arguing about it, and it's going to go from gun control to this and to that. Nothing's going to happen, okay? America was built on bloodshed. It's going to die on bloodshed, okay? It doesn't matter. So folks are wasting their breath out here talking about gun control and politics and this and that. These these demonic devils, they want the strongest, the biggest, the boldest weapons out there that can kill and kill and kill. Okay, this is America. They kill. We should get that by now. They're killers. This is this is all America knows. So for anyone to even get all you know bent out of shape over this, you shouldn't because this is what they do. The same you know lackadaisical attitude they have about when our folks are shot down and murdered by these cops it's just pretty much the same way i feel when stuff like this happens it's sad you know i don't want to hear about anyone being shot down for no reason you know i don't feel happiness in that i just feel very like well you know this is america this is what they do so it's sad but hey what can i say you know this will happen. Folks will, you know, say their prayers, say what we need to do, and then they'll move on to the next tragedy like they always do. Okay. So for me personally, um, I don't wish this on anyone, but at the same time, I'm not going to be holding vigils. I'm not going to be sitting up here doing this and that because they're still sitting up here saying this man maybe had mental issues. I read somewhere that, you know, Oh, he was a country music lover and he liked to gamble. I mean, these devils in the media, they are so disgusting, okay? But we're not surprised. So that's why those of us out here on social media, we have to create the narrative. We have to continue to, you know, call out their hypocrisy. We have to just tell it like it is. He was a domestic terrorist, okay? That's it. And uh, a rabid domestic terrorist. I'm not going to call him mentally ill or none of that. What is sickening ass. But anyway, and this makes me kind of sad to hear this only because, well, not just only, but I still feel bad for people. But over about six years ago, in December will be six years, I actually went to and stayed at Mandalay Bay because as some of you know, I'm a huge Michael Jackson fan. Um, and back in December of 2011, they had this big, huge fan festival out there and they had like, you know, stuff he owned and his records and like his hat and glove. And you'll see in the photos I have in here, like three photos I put in here um, during that festival. And it was a great time. I had a fantastic time, met other people all from around the world. I mean, so to me, Mandalay Bay holds a special place in my heart. Um, and it's just pretty sad. And also Mandalay Bay, they host his show there, the Cirque show. So whenever you're in Vegas, it's always awesome to go see that show because it's great. It's a great show to see. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's just, it's crazy to me. Like you can't do anything. You can't go anywhere. You can't just go, you know, have a good time. You have to be on the lookout. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's crazy. It's you literally... I hardly do anything these days. It's a rarity if I do go somewhere as like like concerts or big events like that. Although I am supposed to go see Janet in November in PA. So it's almost like, damn, you're gonna have to be ready for anything, okay? You're gonna have to know where all the exits are. You're gonna have to know what the, what the hell to do because 
these devils are, are on a mission, okay? They know nothing but blood. So all of us out here, we have to be mindful. We have to be careful. Um, know who you're around. Know what the hell is going on. If you hear anything that even remotely sound like some damn gunshots, do what you got to do. Even if you look crazy as hell running, at least you know you're saving your own damn life, okay? So I say all that to say this. Watch out for these demons. Watch out for these devils. Um, because it's sick. You can't do anything, okay? You can't do anything. So always be on code. Always know where you're at, what you're doing, and all that good stuff. I mean, from what I'm hearing about this dude, this old man, really? I mean, real estate investment. He, apparently, he had all his money, owned uh, single-engine planes, and still, it ain't good enough. Nothing but a demon. Nothing but a devil. But anyway, I just wanted to throw in my two cents about this. Let me know what you think. I've added the latest news about this on here. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. From Las Vegas, and we are here at the scene of the worst mass shooting in American history. A lone gunman from a 32nd floor hotel window shooting at thousands of helpless concert goers below. On stage, country music star Jason Aldi. The music suddenly mixing with the sound of bullets. Terrified people on the ground during the rounds of relentless gunfire they were huddling and then the pause they would run for their lives before witnesses say the gunfire would then begin again. Police and first responders rushing in and admitted SWAT teams reaching that hotel room in that building right here behind me. And tonight the horrific toll now emerging just a short time ago they revealed at least 59 now killed more than 500 injured. What they've now discovered in the suspect's home his family you'll hear from them tonight and the faces of the victims. But first, what began to play out shortly after 10 p.m. local time right here in Las Vegas? ABC senior national correspondent Matt Gutman leading us off. The chaos unfolding in the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. 10.08 p.m., 22,000 country music fans packed in and joined the Route 91 Harvest Festival. But high above them on the 32nd floor of the glittering Mandalay Bay Resort, Police say 64-year-old Stephen Paddock was watching. They say he hammered through the hotel's thick windows and started firing on the crowd below. Country star Jason Aldean was on stage, with automatic gunfire quickly drowning out his voice. The music stops and he runs off stage. The audience huddling on the ground. The Mandalay looming over them. For so many, confusion was this part of the show. Well, that's just a fire fire, huh? Seconds later, the rapid fire shooting starts again. <laughs> Terrified people pile on top of each other, sheltering behind anything they could. <laughs> but they were in an open field. Easy targets for the gunmen in the tower. I don't know where to go! Oh my god! Thousands looking for safety anywhere, even a stranger's car. Relax, relax. My husband and I ran out toward our car, and there were people hiding underneath my car for cover. It was early this morning we found Mike Cronk, head in hands, still stained with his friend's blood. Got hit three times. Mike had used his shirt to keep his friend from bleeding out. You guys were trying to do triage while the shooting was still going on. Yeah, everybody was everybody was jumping over the fences and stuff, but I mean, there's no way I'm going to leave my buddy, you know. We had to keep compression on this thing. And so once we, we weren't even sure if the shooting would stop, we got him over the fence and under the stage, so at least we knew we were safe. As an army of police descended high above the panicked crowds, SWAT teams are closing in on the shooter. They approach his hotel door armed with an explosive. Everyone in the hallway needs to move back. All units move back. Breach, breach, breach. Police say they found Paddock dead inside. He had killed himself. Right now, we need your truck. We just need to get people over to the hospital, okay? Down on the ground, the sidewalk, now a triage center. The wounded carried on barricades turned into stretchers, even in wheelbarrows. We just saw a bunch of people that needed help, so we just started 
piling them in the truck. The entire Vegas Strip frozen, total lockdown. The American playground now a killing field. And Matt Gutman joins us tonight right here in Las Vegas. And Matt, police still pouring over this crime scene. And I know they told you this is going to be an incredibly complex investigation at each of these scenes. That's right, David, because there are multiple scenes covering several city blocks. And, of course, there are those hundreds of victims. But perhaps what's most striking about this shooting is the distance between where that sniper was perched in the 32nd story of the Mandalay and that concert below. You can see about 40 yards away from I'm standing. Those bullets had to travel well over 300 yards to hit their victims at the concert. 